All right, welcome everyone to our Astronomy at Home story time. It's really good to see everybody again. Um, thanks for joining us. I'm Anna and I'm from the Astronomical Society of the Pacific in San Francisco, California. And today we are going to be reading the book called There Once Was a Sky Full of Stars. And this was written by Bob Creelan. And the pictures, the illustrations are by Ami Ziner. Ziner. All right. And today reading for us will be Teresa Summer. So Hi, I'm gonna turn it over to Teresa. I hope that you are all doing well. It's so nice to see your faces. I'm going to share my screen and then make it nice and big for you. As Anna said, the name of this book is called There Once Was a Sky Full of Stars. And it's one of my favorite books to read um, in astronomy because it talks about the beautiful sky. And the words are um, written by Bob Krillin and the pictures are by Annie Zinger. There once was a sky full of stars before lighting the roadways for cars. The world far away would come out to play like Jupiter, Venus, and Mars. The Milky Way stretched overhead once the sky, the sun had retired to bed. Its soft cotton glow like a river of snow looked so close it could oh, close. your head. Deep, deep out into space, your eyes could look on to no end. At the edge of your sight, a galaxy's light that took two million years to send. The magical moon would light up a room and turn yards into dreamlands below. Above you, where you are, a bright shooting star burst quick in a bright bluish glow. Have you guys ever seen that animals light up by the moonlight? So, so interesting. But so why are these wonders now hidden from sight? And where did they all seem to go? And what hides that twinkling starlight we seek in a sky full of pink orange glow? Lights, lights, billions of lights that are shining this way and that. Lighting up flagpoles and buildings and signs and treetops and belfries and bats. It even has a sign that says, all right, light, <laughs> all around. And the universe fades away if we turn all our nights into days. Some children won't care to look up in the air. Those stories, those stars are just stories, they'll say. And what of our animal friends? On the night, their survival depends because darkness tells them when to sleep, when to hunt, when to eat. Without the dark, the life the way they know it ends. The trees may not know when it's fall, full of leaves when winter comes to, winds come to call. Sorry, skipped a couple of words there. Although people can change when the world's rearranged, mother nature might stagger and stall. But our sky full of stars that we've hidden from sight will once again be truly found when the glaring and blaring of each upward light has turned downward to shine on the ground. Then the Milky Way once again shines over star freckled skylines divine and the night will be dark in each forest and park just as mother nature designed. Yes, you and I, we can save the night sky. The answer is simple and clear. When we turn down the lights that have faded our nights, by the thousands, the stars will reappear. 
and there's someone actually going up a ladder and fixing the light. Looks like a, a mom and a kid fixing the lights in their house together. So welcome the twilight with wide open eyes under heavens unspoiled by light. In our tiny blue world, we will sail the dark skies as we dance with all the stars in the night. All the kids look so happy, even the dog looks happy in this picture. And that's the end of our book, but not the end of our session, of course. I think that book Thanks, Teresa. That was a great book. Thank you. Thank you. That's one of my favorites. Yay. It really is such a nice book. So now I'm going to go back to the other. Um, Thank you. Oh, I'm so glad you liked it. <laughs> so I think now Teresa is going to bring up some pictures so we can talk about different kinds of lights and how some of them um, prevent us from being able to see the night sky and maybe aren't so good for some of our animal friends. Right. So I'm just getting those slides ready now so I could show you. I know some of you sent in pictures of lights in your neighborhood. And so we're going to look at some of them. These pictures were taken by Campbell and you could see the way the light is kind of like a box. And um, does anyone have lights like this at home? Is, and is Campbell here today? Maybe Campbell's not here today. Could be. Campbell has come every single time, I think, so we miss her. <laughs> I think it's nice that she sent the pictures for us anyway, so that we could see what her lights in her neighborhood look like. Those look like lights you see in parking lots sometimes. Mm -hmm. And these are picked photos by Evan and Tyler in Fresno. And you can see they showed a light from inside their house and one from outside. Are they on today? Our I'm friends sure. from Fresno? I think they might be. Um, Evan and Tyler, I think I saw earlier. And these are there pictures are. of you. Yeah, that like you. There you go. With yeah. and Darwin. What's Hold on, let's hear from Evan and Tyler so they can tell us about their photos. I think oh, they're on right now. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Hey, Evan, which one did you take? I took both. You, no? you, you took the one of the one outside, right? The lantern outside. Mm hmm Where is that? In front of our house. In front of our house by the garage, right? Mm hmm Those are solar lights, though. They only turn on when it gets it's dark. dark. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a great feature. Yeah. Very cool. And then Tyler, what about yours? I did one that was inside the house in my room specifically. Great. Thank you. Thanks for sharing those. Yeah, we really appreciate that. You guys sharing the lights in your neighborhood and in your house because what we're going to talk about now is sort of is our activity. I know a lot of us now have been taking neighborhood walks and we would love it if you can look up and take some pictures of the lights in your neighborhood. So here's a uh, picture that we have about keeping the stars visible at night. So if you look there's one that has a round ball and it has lights coming out in all directions. And if you see those lights, that light is shining up in the sky instead of down on the ground where we need it. So that's this one here. And then this one next to it is also pretty bad because it is shining partway up into the sky. So a better light is a light that has a roof over it and keeps all the light facing down. But the best light is one that's focused down onto the ground where you need it instead of up in the sky where we don't need it or want it. So let's take a look at this picture. Do you guys see the red picture? Let's look at that picture. So in the red picture, you'll see that it has these lights that are shining out everywhere. 
And if we look at the same house, when they have the lights directed down, that's on the green side. If you look at the red picture, you'll see that what areas are lit up. And if you look at the green picture, it still has the same areas lit up. So it's still safe for walking. But look at the darkness above the house. That makes it really nice to see the stars. That's amazing. <laughs> and that's just that? some lights. So I think that our friend Andy is here from Santa Cruz. You it. And he took some pictures that I would love it if he could just come on and say some words about these pictures. Yes, I'm here. Oh, great. So um, I live in Santa Cruz, California. And here in Santa Cruz, we have a group that is trying to talk to people about getting better lighting, both in and around their homes. And some lights are put up by businesses and the city itself. And we're trying to talk to those people about putting better lights up. And so that, that picture on top, that's not, not near my home, but it's near the home of some monarch butterflies. So I don't know if you've ever seen these beautiful monarch butterflies. They're orange and black. They're really easy to recognize or identify. And it's near their home. And it's not their home where they live all the time. But in the wintertime, monarchs travel from thousands of miles away from places far up north, like in Canada. And they fly all the way to Santa Cruz because it's a little bit warmer here in Santa Cruz. And they make a home in the trees. And this is very, very close to where they, um, they make their home in the trees over the winter. And um, some people have done studies that show that lights, bright lights at night um, interfere with um, some animals, including these monarch butterflies. So we're trying to talk to these people and say, hey, why don't you point these lights down so they don't distract the butterflies? And then on the lower picture, this is a bridge that goes into downtown Santa Cruz. And uh, Teresa just showed you some examples of those lights. These ones, they kind of have a roof, but they go out on all sides. And they're meant to light up the road, but as you can see from the picture, they're lighting up the other side of the bridge and going into the river. And if you can imagine fish in the river, fish are attracted to lights and some young fish um, go where there's a lot of light. And that's not really a good thing for them because other th bigger animals that want to eat the little fish can see the little fish at night. So we're talking with people in our city to try to change those lights so they only shine where they're needed on the road because we don't need light on the river at night. Thank you so much, Andy. Sounds sure. like that's good work that you're doing there in Santa Cruz. We're trying. And that's something that you, all of you boys and girls and parents can do is talk to the people in your area to make sure that your lights are aiming down and are nice and focused. Um, this is a pictures from the International Dark Sky Association and they have lots of information on what lights are good to use and where you can find them, what stores you can find them. Well, now it's a little bit challenging to find some stores to open, but um, you can see the big difference that it makes just having these types of shielding. And so um, we invite you to go to the International Dark Sky Association website, which is just darksky.org. These are some tips for some parents that are there, um, just talking about what you can do to keep the nighttime sky really looking beautiful. And so these are just some ideas. Like if you have, number four is like, if you have a timer, as someone was saying earlier, you, the solar lights only come out when it, on when it's dark. So you really only need lights when it's dark. And so 
I would love you if you guys could um, try the next time you're taking a walk around your neighborhood, take a camera or a cell phone with a picture uh, app and take um, some photos of the lights around your neighborhood and see, are they shielded? Are they pointing down? Are they pointing up into the sky? And then you can send us some photos uh, just at storytime at astrosociety.org. Hey, Teresa, this is Andy again. Hi, Andy. Yeah, I, I was wondering maybe if you could ask the kids that are online if they have nightlights because um, some people don't like to sleep in the dark entirely, but I bet the lights that they have in their rooms for night lights are probably just the kind of lights we're talking about. They only have enough light to just see where you're going if you wake up in the middle of the night. Right. That's a That's great question. Yeah. A good idea. Um, should we stop sharing now and maybe... Um, can you bring up the, the slide, the final slide, Teresa? Sure. So let's let everyone know what we're doing next week and then we'll have the rest of the time for sharing and questions. So um, I hope you will join us again next week for another story time. Next week we're going to be reading kind of a silly book, but it's about the solar system. It's called The Three Little Aliens and the Big Bad Ro Robot. And we'll be reading it at the same time next week and you can learn more and register to participate on our website. So I'm going to stop recording now and then we'll use the rest of the time to answer questions and share. Thanks for coming everybody. See you next week. Um, but you don't have to leave yet. <laughs> yes, yeah, so 